Okay, fam, welcome back. So today we're going to be going over the Grayscale Trusts, and we're also going to talk about GME a little bit. So with that being said, let's get it. Okay, so I am actually home early today because, uh, yeah, I got sent home over some BS, so here I am. Uh, we're having a conversation now. Um, I'm, I'm probably going to end up leaving that place anyways because that place is garbage. I mean, the, the place is a dump. The people there are toxic. Uh, you know, the management is jaded. It's just a really awful place to be. And I think I uh, probably should have left a long time ago. So um, anyways, it doesn't matter. Uh, we make plenty of money on the side, so we're not too worried about uh, a potential loss of income. It's not a big deal. So um, let's go over LTCN first. All right. So you guys can see if you take a close look at the MACD here, you can see that the the, uh, the bottom EMA here is actually starting to curl up. So look at this thing. You see how it's starting to curl up? That, in my mind, is an indication that potentially we're getting ready to move into a golden cross. Okay, And the price is reflecting that. As you guys can see, we've had two weeks of up. Uh, we also do have a golden cross on the RSI as well. So uh, keep a lookout for that. Last time we got one a golden cross that was um, that had crossed bullish at that level was pretty much, I would say probably this one right back here in December of 2022. Again, that was the bear market low. Uh, you guys have got to understand that ever since that March peak, Bitcoin has been basically just chopping sideways, uh, kind of sideways and down into a channel. Um, I mean, in all honesty, look, I'm going to tell you all right now, uh, usually we cover this in the Bitcoin video and we will cover Bitcoin later, but I think that Bitcoin is going to start. So we might have a little bit more choppiness in, this, in September, but in October, Bitcoin is probably going to start ripping pretty quickly in October would be my guess. Uh, because again, it's got to work its way back up to the previous all-time high of 75K, which last time Bitcoin smashed all time highs was in November. So, you know, you have a whole 31 days in October to be able to move from 63 K to 75 K. Uh, and I think we're going to start seeing everything crypto related starting next month, just start smashing to the upside. I mean, just destroying <laughs> pre previous, uh, price resistances and all time highs and all that good stuff. So, um, long story short here, LTCN looks very good. Okay. Uh, we are seeing the curving up on the MACD. That's always a good sign. Uh, if I show you guys an example of, let's see if I can find one. Uh, I'll take a look at maybe Wayfair because I think this is actually a good example of maybe what something looks like. Yeah, so Wayfair is one that we did a call debit spread on. We doubled our money on this one, but you guys can see the MACD. The histogram is turning that lighter red color, okay? and the volume is starting to trend in the opposite direction. Getting this MACD golden cross, already got the RSI golden cross. And you guys can see that basically this thing has already moved up a massive 40% from that swing low there. Uh, so that's a good example of what you could expect um, the price to do after getting a MACD golden cross. So where do I think LTCN is gonna go once it gets this golden cross? Um, that is, if I'm being completely honest, that's impossible to say. I mean, it could move back up to the swing high pretty fast. I would not be surprised because, like I said before, usually when altcoin season happens, um, I mean, man, these alt these alts really, it's kind of eye-popping just how fast they move. I mean, sometimes you'll get like a 50, 100, 200, 300 percent gainer in like a day, maybe seven days, but usually it's pretty quick. It doesn't happen you know, it happens like it, it, it begins and ends faster than most people expect. So like maybe six months, you know, like, like for example, you know, you'll get a bunch of altcoins that'll be popping off, but they'll all pop off differently. And then probably like the biggest moves on that altcoin rip into the moon is like happens within five to seven days and it's over. So maybe the, let's say the altcoin was at 10 cents and it moved up to before really having its final move, it moved from 10 cents to say $2. And then that last final push uh, to its peak could be from like $2 to $20, but it happens in seven days. Okay. That, that's what I'm talking about here. Um, so LTCN, I mean, bottom line is we are pretty much right at the top 
of this resistance. I would still not quite call this a flip zone yet into support, but I mean, we could use it as support. So I suppose if you're looking at that buy zone here would be 13 to 15. Um, there is this trend line that we were holding before uh, that may hold as some resistance in the future. That's somewhere between 22 to roughly about 24. And then you have 25 to 27. Uh, a resistance up there and then they swing high at 54 and of course you know above that 75 to 100 to 135 then three to 400 and 510 at the previous all-time highs before eventually breaking out to new all-time highs so giving you guys the measured move here just from the current price we'd be looking at roughly about 83 percent and 272 percent respectively uh, bchg not quite getting the curling up yet on this one um but something I do want to note here is we did have one of these infamous undercuts that I talk about where it undercuts a level and then it comes straight back up. That's exactly what this is right here. Uh, so we're potentially about to get on RSI Golden Cross on the weekly time frame, which is a macro time frame that's extremely bullish. Uh, last time we had one of those was back here in January of this year. So it was nine months ago. Um, or sorry, no, that my bad. That's the death grass. Uh, so February of 2024. So it was roughly about seven months ago. Uh, but again, we're stuck in between the trend line and the EMA. So we're kind of wedged in here. Um, so support here is going to be roughly about 630 to going out to potentially as, much, as long as 750. Again, it's hard to say exactly when these trusts are going to move because they don't move exactly in sync with native crypto. Um, I will say... I think likely these things are going to really start ripping uh, LTC and a BCHG when Bitcoin goes to all-time highs, ETCG and ETH E when ETH goes to all-time highs, and then the rest of these when the altcoin season happens. All right, so resistance zones here, we're looking at roughly about 10 and a quarter to 1280. And then you have roughly about 18 to 20. And then the swing high up here at 24. So roughly about 87, uh, 193% and 256% move. HN, so yeah, we're still kind of in this wedge. I mean, it looks like we might've popped out of here a little bit, but I wouldn't really consider that a breakout. That's just kind of, we're sitting at the top of the zone there. So 250 to $3 is gonna be the current level of support here. So we're also kind of sitting in resistance as well. So that's gonna be roughly about 360 to uh, 420 and then the next level would be seven to eight dollars and then we have ten and a quarter or ten and a half uh, which again is the which is the target for the falling wedge that's basically the top of the wedge so um if i just go back down here from support the first move would be roughly about 65 percent second move 210 percent and then third move 300 percent ETCG, this is one that we hold. And for those of you guys that know, we haven't showed you our portfolio. We don't show it every day that we're on here, but yes, we do still have the same exact positions that we showed you before, okay? So ETCG, we are below the support, but because this particular level right here, 775 has been holding for four weeks, we're just gonna go ahead and say that's probably gonna continue to hold. Uh, so above that, it's 860 to $10. If you guys are worried that these are gonna push back to bear market lows, which again, I'm pretty sure they're not, uh, three dollars to five ten, and then we have roughly about thirteen and a quarter to sixteen, and then roughly about nineteen fifty all the way up there at the uh, resistance highs. So, if I just measure from the bottom of this level here, the bottom of those candles, it's roughly one hundred and three percent move and one hundred and fifty five percent move respectively. ETH E, so kind of similar story as ETCG, just kind of holding this line down here, roughly about eighteen fifty is what I'd be looking at for support. Uh, resistance is 23.50 to roughly about 28.50. Then you have your big, huge, massive multi-month cup and handle pattern here uh, with the target of $47. So just giving you guys the measured moves here from, let's say, the white line. Of course, you guys can you know buy wherever you want to. I'm just giving you the like the maximum potential profit here from uh, one support level to a target level. So roughly about 49%, and then 148% respectively. So uh, the RSI is also about to get a golden cross as well. Phil G, uh, this thing is also about to get a golden cross. You can see on a lot of these that there is actually, uh, okay, maybe not that one, but a lot of these are getting golden crosses or they already have them. 
Uh, so that tells me likely that October is going to be a very bullish month for crypto. It usually is anyways, but this is kind of an early indication. Again, the curling up of the MACD. These are early indications that the bull run is coming. Okay. In my opinion, the final leg of the bull run, which is coming over the next few months, is already starting to ramp up to that point. All right, so we finally do have a close above the support zone. Again, this close is, or the zone I mean, is uh, roughly about 37 to 43. Uh, it's not really an impressive candle. It doesn't give me a lot of confidence, but it is still above the zone. So we'll just call that support. And then the highs up here, the all-time high is $400. So if I just measure from the current price, it's 613%. If I measure from the, let's say the bottom of the support zone down here, 1,030%. GBAT, um, so support here, roughly about 445 to 525. The resistance zone, roughly about 770 to $10. And then the all-time high, roughly about $32 up here. So we're looking at roughly about 106% and 560% move, respectively. Um, I mean, yeah, pretty much almost every single one of these, the histogram is starting to turn that light red shade color, and it's consistently moving towards the bullish directions. So uh, I don't think it's going to be much longer before we see all of these start to rip to new all-time highs. I think it's going to happen pretty quick. Um, I... You know, I'm, I'm willing to bet that probably Bitcoin and a lot of the altcoins are going to start moving up. Probably some, uh, probably pretty, I, I would say they're probably going to have pretty sizable moves up into roughly about the middle of next month. I suspect Bitcoin's probably going to be somewhere between 68 to 70,000 by the middle of next month. I know it sounds crazy, but that's what I think is going to happen. So, um, and we will likely see things like Misty, Coney, uh, the Bitcoin miners, uh, Bitcoin oscillators like Litecoin and stuff uh, move up with it as well. So GLIV is still holding the support here. So we have roughly about, we'll say 1180 to 1460. The highs up here, roughly about $80. So the move all the way up here is going to be roughly about 480% move, G-Link. Uh, so we got a nice little double bottom here. Also a potential W pattern playing out as well. Uh, if that W pattern is to play out, it's basically the top of the start of the move. That's the target here, so roughly about 118. It should go at least that far up. Um, again, MACD is curling up here, so support here is going to be roughly about 38 to 45. Resistance 65 to uh, $83, and then the all-time high up here at 220 So roughly about 103% move and 418%. GSOL, so we did actually get a move back above this trend line, so I guess you could still look at this trend line as support. I'm looking at this whole box here as support, so roughly about 300 to 355 um, and then we have 580 as the all-time high up there, so... If it does get back to the, the bottom of the zone, you guys are looking for a dip buy. It's roughly about 95% move. GXLM, nice little bounce off of this line here. Uh, so the line, considering that's where the bounce point is, 1460, I'd be looking at that between there and roughly about 2050 as a buy zone. So resistance here, 52 to roughly about 58. And then we have 68, $69 somewhere in there um, as a potential target. So measuring from this line, 187%, 245%. And then measuring from the next line, we're looking at roughly about 295 to 364%. Okay, Mana. Um, yeah, this one's playing around with this line a lot. It's actually back above the line as well. So I'm just going to say that this line right around this level is going to be 1050. Uh, that would be kind of support. I suppose you could look at the bottom of these candles Say, okay, maybe 690. You could buy down at 550. Uh, you could even buy maybe as high as 1270, kind of in that range. I don't usually like to, like, yeah, I don't usually like to use something like that as a range because, again, the candles are kind of too all over the place. I mean, it's just, yeah, I mean, that's kind of ugly. I don't like that. So that's the reason why I'm using the white line. 
Uh, so resistance here is roughly about seventeen fifty to twenty dollars, and then the all time high for GBAT is going to be all the way. Or sorry, Meta is uh, going to be all the way up there at seventy. So roughly about ninety seven percent and six hundred percent respectively. Zcash, so lots and lots of support down here at this white line. Roughly about three twenty is what we're looking at. Uh, you have 440 to 520 and then eight dollars to roughly about 960 up there at there, that resistance area and then 10 and a quarter is going to be the swing high up there if it gets back down to this white line and you're looking for a dip buying opportunity it'd be roughly about 60 percent uh, 198 to 200 percent and then 224 percent respectively okay so let's take a look at gme real quick um again we don't we haven't covered this in a while, but for some reason, I don't know why, but for some reason, GME had like a massive squeeze today. So uh, we do still have our call debit spreads for that. It closes in about four weeks. Um, if I'm being completely honest, we're probably going to, if it doesn't get up to our strike price or above our strike price within probably two weeks of expiration, we're just going to get out of it because again, you know, it's like, what is the point? You know, why? Why wait for this thing to go up until expiration uh, when there's no guarantee it's going to? So big, huge, fat green candle today. I uh, kind of had this gap down and this just kind of chopped sideways. And then for some reason, I don't know why, it just had this massive, massive move today. Um, so yeah, you can see the volume on the left here was really small. It was only 9 million shares traded. Uh, but today was a massive 62 million shares. So I have no idea what's going on here. Uh, we did get a golden cross on the the uh, RSI, the MACD's curling up. So, um, I mean, anything could happen here. It's it's hard to say exactly what to expect. Uh, again, I'm not sure why this thing squeezed. Maybe because the Fed rate cuts. I have no idea. But um, of course, this is a perfect buy zone to buy down here. You can see there's a lot of support. Uh, the the since we're on the video, I'm just gonna go ahead and cover it. So. As you guys know, we got the MACD golden or the yeah the MACD golden cross here. Okay, last time we got one of these was a stupid, just stupid gain here. Okay, so it happened way back here in. Let's see if I can even find it uh, back here in November of 2019. And again, that was just right before the pandemic dump, and you know the Fed printing crazy amounts of money, so. It, yeah, it pretty much was, um, this was roughly about five years ago. So it took a few months to actually play out. It, actually, it took almost an entire year from that MACD Golden Cross to play out uh, to really get a big rip to the moon. But once we did, I mean, this thing just got stupid. So you guys can see in November of the having year, right around the time that Bitcoin was going to all-time highs, the exact same month that Bitcoin was going to all-time highs, that's when this thing broke out. So we could see GME go to the moon and go to all-time highs maybe by the end of this year. It could happen. I mean, that's what happened roughly about four years ago. So uh, you can see this thing went from a low of like a dollar or 60-something cents all the way up to 120. So that's at least a 120x. So we got the golden cross here on both of these indicators, and now it's just a matter of you know, waiting to see what's going to happen. I mean, the last big bull run didn't play out immediately, but as we get closer to Bitcoin having its bull run, I suspect we may actually uh, see some big price action. You can see we almost have a golden cross on the EMAs as well on the monthly. So that's that really speaks volumes. If I go to the two week here, uh, you can see we've actually already had a golden cross and we're holding above it. Uh, not really like in this RSI potential death cross here but again it is in the bull zone so i'm not too worried about it and yeah i mean the the weekly has we have had a death cross on the on the weekly on uh, everything except for the emas so uh in terms of targets here i mean looking at gme for targets i'd be looking probably somewhere around maybe at least 30 because you can see there is like, if you see the, the dotted line there, there's a lot of resistance there at roughly about that 2930 area. It could even go all the way up to roughly about 45 to $50. 
uh, before potentially getting stopped. And then the next major area would be roughly about 60 to 65, somewhere in there. So AMC, this one's uh, interesting. So of course we have the, the um, golden crosses back here, potential death cross on the RSI. I wouldn't be too worried about that if I'm being completely honest. So two week time frame. Um, again, MACD is still playing out bullish there. Still has to get above the zero to actually be in bull territory though. Um, I mean, yeah, in terms of structure, this thing basically would need to get probably right above, I would say it at least needs to get right above this kind of six and a half dollar level to actually break structure and start creating higher highs and higher lows. Uh, that's what I'd be looking at. It's not anywhere close to that yet, but I suspect it probably will happen um, at some point here, maybe early 2025. So we got the Golden Cross on the MACD. Uh, you guys know the last time that played out, we had a stupid, uh, stupid levels of gains <laughs> going on during the previous bull run. RSI Golden Cross potentially playing out here as well. Uh, I mean, shoot, even the top EMA here, which is a lagging indicator. These are all fanned out probably too much is still all the way up at $50. So that's above both of these gap levels here. Um, and the thing I want to point out is that the, uh, we did actually get the golden cross right around the same time for GME that we got for it or well, I should, okay, hold on a sec. So GME ran up in November, uh, but we got the golden cross earlier, uh, roughly about a year before that. But um, so, I mean, yeah, this golden cross was almost exactly four, four years ago to the dot, almost exactly, not quite, but, um, then we had the golden cross and then a few months later, yeah, just like I said, in early 2021, that's when this thing started moving up. So, uh, as soon as Bitcoin hits all time highs, we could see these meme stocks start to run because a lot of meme coins, I mean, people love buying them and they're just all about the memes. So uh, anyways, hope you all enjoyed this content. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you all later. Peace.